Man, I'm so glad to have y'all here with us today. So how many of you are excited about this series that we've been doing? Are y'all so excited? Your pastor's been dropping it like it's hot for Jesus. Y'all may be seated. So guys, we are in our second week of living on purpose. And when I ask a question here, I want, I want to say something to you guys. Like... When we're in here singing, uh, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom. (laughs) Do you really believe it? Do y'all really believe it? When we're prophesying in this house, do you really believe that where you are is not where you're staying? Do you? Like, do you really believe it? Or do you feel like that you are so used to where you've been? Come on, somebody that you don't know how to get out of here. Because negativity breeds what? Huh? Y'all can't got no wrong answers. I'm gonna need y'all to light your fire. Negativity what? It breeds negativity. It's contagious, right? And so the, t- the propensity that we have when we're walking through a season is we allow a season in our life to what? Define our lifetime. So what do we do? We get so addicted to the negativity that we can't see our way out, right? It's almost like last week when I was talking about uh, the, the bird, that when the, when the, when the mama shoots, uh, or, or the sheep, I talked about the sheep, when the sheep is like moved away from the family and then all of a sudden they try to take it back to the mother's sheep, she just like rejects it. And so what does the enemy do when he sees you coming? See, some of y'all think you ain't got no story, you ain't got no history, you ain't got no destiny, your life is, oh my God, my, you're always magnifying what's wrong in your life, right? And the Bible says that life and death are in the power of what? Huh? Y'all know that, boo. Not my words, your words. Not my tongue, your your tongue's in your mouth. My job as your pastor is to remind you every day, Amos 9, 13, it won't be long now. God's decree said things are about to happen so fast that my head is about to spin. Blessing upon blessing upon blessing. I won't be able to keep up. Y'all, when people on my staff or people in my world, I'm talking people are blessed that hangs out with me. And I shouldn't toot my own horn, but I am. Toot, toot. It's because I live in the overflow. Like I expect nothing greater. I expect if MTV can have it, I can have it. If the world can have it, I can have it. Why? Because the wealth of the wicked is stored up for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the reason we don't walk in it is because we don't know our doggone purpose. We are allowing that season that broke our hearts because the enemy is a whole whip. Y'all know that, right? He is a punk. Do you know where the enemy gets you? Y'all tell me. Come on, Brett. I've been missing you. Brett about to amen me, honey. The enemy cannot take you out, so he's trying to keep you awake every night, worried about what other people are doing, right? And before you know it, you are addicted with the same mojos that your mama's got. The same, ugh. It's just going to stink. I said I didn't want to be like my mom, and here I am, just like her. I don't even know how to get out. You know how you get out of the mully grubs? How? How? Come on, say it loud. Break the generational curses. How you going to break it if you don't know what the Word of God says? He says, be still and know that I am God. He didn't say, wring your hands, stress out, go to the doctor because you keep having panic attacks. You ain't even dead yet, but you got so many medical bills. Or get on so many prescription drugs that you're shaking all the time or stressed all the time or angry all the time, up and down, you can't sleep. No, God says, be still and know that I am God. Like if you're in this season that I just described, you can get out today. How? Because I ain't staying here anymore. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. 
You know what Mimi just said? You know what Mimi just said? Just get up. But we feel so afraid to get up. Why? Because we got so used to the deprivation and pain. We can't even enjoy our life because we're so used to scrolling on Instagram. Coming over here, Mimi goes, oh my God. My wattage for social media use last week was up 48%. She's, 40, she's 74 yesterday. Why? 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 Because my mother has found her youth. Why? Because she realized that she ain't staying here. She can cry. She can be grieving. She can be angry. She can think she's almost dead. She can go by her cemetery, but instead, she's over here buying cute shoes. Y'all, listen. One day, a man visited his doctor because he was in excruciating pain. The doctor asked him, so where does it hurt? The man answered, all over, all over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this because this is going to make y'all understand because this is y'all, some of y'all. I hurt all over. The doctor told the man to touch his shoulder. He touches his shoulder. The man touched his shoulder and cried out, Ow! Ow! Next, the doctor told the man to touch his forehead. Ow! Ow! It's so painful. The doctor told the man, touch your knee. He touched his knee and the man goes, oh, I can't, I'm in so much pain. I'm in excruciating pain. The doctor thoroughly examined the man and concluded, no wonder you're in pain everywhere you touch. You have a dislocated finger. <laughs> Y'all know that was funny. <laughs> See, we laugh at the ridiculousness of this man's situation, but many of us are doing what? Huh? The same thing. Many of us go right back into our patterns. As long as everything's going great, we shouting on social media. People are texting each other. Girl, she had a breakthrough. What happened to Eleanor? What is going on? She is shouting on, on the stories. Did you see, I think she's drinking. She went from being depressed to happy. What's up with that? No, she came to Limitless and decided, I'm about to live my best life. If it didn't take me out, I'm about to get my bounce back. And when I get up, I'm going to pull everybody I can out of hell. That's why you got to get through, boo. It's because when you're down, you got to pull people up. Your goal is not to get up so you can afford all the sea dues and the boats. And that's all going to come because it's a perk. The nice everything. It's a perk. But the reason God is allowing you to get the tenacity to walk up into limitless. If you still stuck after a year of being at limitless, you want to be stuck. Because you can't hang around with me and stay where you are. You got to realize that God encounters. He brings relationships into your life so that they can pull you out. Because there's something in you that the world needs. Many of us. Like everything in our lives, everything's wrong. Yet, in fact, just one thing in our lives is wrong. Our heart's broken. We're scared of rejection. In fact, just one thing. One bad day, and we throw the whole doggone life away. You're like, it's one day, not a whole life. Well, I'm just, I just can't get it together. You're in a season, not a sentence. This is your training ground. You get training ground at the rock bottom. Right? Well, you don't understand, Kim. If you knew the trouble I've seen, I'm, I'm at rock bottom. And I can't get up. Well, then flip over and look up. Right? Oh, you better hope I'm all the way dead. You try to take me out. Because I have discovered that every time I fall, the higher I'm going. I always realize when the devil hits me and everybody's talking about me, it's because he wants to win some more people to Jesus. Because one thing about this girl is I ain't giving up until I draw my last breath. You better watch me, but don't you sleep on me. 
See, purpose is not measured by what you have done compared to what someone else has done. This is y'all's problem. They got these filters now. I can wake up in the morning with bare head. I can wake up in the morning with no makeup on, and I can get that baby doll filter. And all of a sudden, I look like I am Brooke Shields, 20 years old. And there's little flickers going all over the screen. And people on social media think I'm so saved. They're like, Pastor Kim, do you see the angels flying around you as you're teaching? I said, yes. It's called the baby doll filter. But what the enemy does is the enemy makes us start looking at the highlight reels that people show so that you don't like your life. Because I can tell you something, baby. As long as you walked in this building today, the, the same God that works for me works for you. And it ain't over until the fat lady sings and she ain't singing. You serve God. You serve the God that will... He put the stars and the moon and he created billions. We're almost at 8 billion people in this world. We all got different fingerprints. You don't think he can't recover you? You don't think he can give you a bestseller out of your mess? One of the greatest benefits that arises out of a close relationship with God, which is where you find your how are you going to know how to hear God if you don't ever talk to him? There's somebody watching today and somebody in this building today that you ain't talked to God in so long because he didn't heal of the situation you prayed for. Instead of questioning God, you should look at it as I'm about to give the devil some black eyes. Because if you don't learn how to praise your way out of situations... You're going to be on every kind of addiction you can think of. You're going to end up exactly where you don't want to end up. Because you can't get your mind under control. One of the greatest benefits is the relationship with the Heavenly Father. Because why? He guides us. He directs us. And He prepares us. It's in the valley where God is preparing you. It's not on the mountaintop. We all want to be on the mountaintop. We all want to be living life like it's glorious. We all want to be able to walk in and buy whatever car we want to buy. We all want to be able to pay our bills and I have to pray and fast every month to get out of debt. And God's over here saying, you're wasting all this free life college that I'm giving you off of the choices that you made. Because he's the kind of God that will take the mess ups and the screw ups that you've caused and he will give you oil for the exchange. I'm preaching. So if you want to experience God's purpose, say how. If you want to experience God's purpose, don't go looking for his will. Look for him. See, this is the problem. All of you prophetic people chasers. Oh, I need a word. I need a word. Y'all done so $58.99 in every person that says, if you give me $58.99, I'll give you a prophetic word. When if you open your Bible and you say, God, I need a word, there are 8,000 promises in that word for you. <laughs> then we'll let somebody that had bad pizza that told us we were going to be married 28 years ago with five kids and you ain't never been married. Now you mad at God because you let somebody that ate bad pizza tell you, uh-uh. You got to look for God. You got to look for him. Most people wander, y'all, through life aimlessly with little purpose and little passion and little direction. Right? Why? Because your goal is simply to get by. Just exist. But there's a better way. God wants you to leave. Y'all, I literally believe every day of my life I can envision when I lay down in that bed my goal is to have my guardian angel like this good she's asleep that girl wear me out people always like Kim how do you do all you do 
because I am put on this earth to love the hell out of everybody that I can. And I know the devil has been after me since I was a little girl. And so if he's been after me since I was a little girl, he ain't after my now. He's after my future. He knows there's something in me that I don't see yet. Mm. God has so much more for who? Huh? For you. He's got so much more. But here's the key thought. Y'all ready for this? You ready for this? Write this down. This is tweetable. Everyone ends up somewhere. Few people end up somewhere on purpose. This pandemic taught you that, didn't it? Boom shaka. Like a, like a, oh, you ready to retire? And then you had to use all your money during the pandemic. But my God says in Romans 8, 28, that he's working all things together for my good. He knew you were about to go get you a house in Cabo San Lucas on your retirement. He's like, no, 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 no. I need your voice. I need you. You're a game changer. You're a nation. Well, I don't want to do it. Too bad. He trusts you more than you trust yourself. I love this, Psalms 90 and 12. Let's look at it. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Basically, what it's saying is teach us to realize the importance of life. We have to understand how short life is. In James, it says that life is but a what? Vapor. It's better, you ain't coming back a dog or a cat. This is all you got. I love watching my little mama fly. She's 74 years old. She wrote her very first book. Look at her. My mama's always been very dignified, very, she just served her whole life. And now I'm watching my mama, because I make everybody, I'll make you crazy you hang out with me. You hear me? I'll have you dance and stoop, and you'll be like, who should I be doing here? Yeah, girl, let's go. Where's the music? In our heads. Let's go. Why? Why? Because you got to get out of your comfort zone in order to do what God's called you to do. And I love watching my mama fly like that. That's why y'all got to get around some people that believe like you. You got to get involved in the dream team here. You got to serve. You got to get busy. Why? Because we need you to grow. Well, there ain't nothing in me. Start with the connect group. All you got to do is push Zoom. Well, but then I got to put my wig on. Use the baby doll filter. I will send you the effect. But what if I don't know how to do it? People love you not knowing how to do it. They love watching you step out of your comfort zone because it makes them want to step out of their comfort zone. People don't want your perfect. They want to see your real. They want to hear how you did it. They want to hear where you came from. Here's the problem. A lot of us know what to do. We just aren't doing it. Why? Because we're scaredy cats. You a chicken. Why? Y'all tell me why you a chicken. Tell me. You're like, I ain't no chicken. Then why are you still where you were last year? Worried about what other people think. You are worried. Why? Comfort. Why else? Come on, yell out. Put in the comments. Huh? Familiar. What else? Failure. What else? Huh? Rejection. And all of that is connected to that person sitting next to you. A person. So you're letting a person that don't even know how to swim keep you drowning. You are letting people that have never constructed anything Give you constructive criticism. <laughs> oh, if I didn't want to break this mic, I'd have dropped it. <laughs> you know what I love? I love when people that have been through hell walk out of the flames carrying buckets of water for those still consumed by the fire. 
That's why you ain't got to have it together. Don't we love that? Bringing buckets. Why? Because if you wouldn't have walked through what you walked through right now, the thing that you hate, did you know your purpose is connected to the very thing that you can't stand? Your purpose is connected to the very thing that made you stay up and weep at night. Why? Because it gives you empathy. Because it gives you free life college. Did you know you can't go to seminary? You can't go get another degree. You already got so many degrees. You got more degrees than a thermometer. The only thing you ain't done is said yes to what God wants you to do. He's saying, I let you walk through it. See, we say, God won't give you more than you can handle. It ain't in the Bible. Come on, tell your neighbor, that ain't in the Bible. Come on, that ain't in the Bible. Sorry. The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. But here's what God will do. God knew before you were ever even a thought in your mother's womb that you were going to suffer so many deaths in one year. He knew it. He knew that you were going to walk through divorce again. He knew it. He knew that you were going to use all your 5013, whatever, what is it, 401K. All these five, five, four, three, X, Y, Z. He knew it. And he said, 2020, they're going to walk through a pandemic. 2021, they're going to encounter a woman at Limitless. And they go all of a sudden feel some Popeye spinach up in their bellies. And all of a sudden, they're going to realize it ain't over until I, get up, until I give up. But I ain't giving up today. I may not have it together. I may not have it together tomorrow or next week. But one thing you won't see me doing is stopping. There ain't nothing in this world better than someone that literally comes out of hell carrying buckets. You ain't going to carry buckets if you ain't walked through hell. You probably did everything they said you did. You know why I can be so real, talk to people? I will get in their face. I'll be like, girl, bye. I'm going to need you to get your mouth under control. You can't be talking to him like that. I'm going uh -uh, to need you to uh, take that off. I see all your cleavage. Ah, uh, And they're like, okay, Pastor Kim. Not because I'm controlling, but because they know them that I love them so much that I am bringing buckets of water to douse on them, to get them from the back of the line to the front of the line. I couldn't do this if I wouldn't have embraced my journey. It's happened. But now you can't even find your purpose because you won't let go of what happened back there. Romans 8, 28 says that God is working all things together for our good. I love what Proverbs 29, 18 says in the King James Version. It says, where there is no huh? vision. Y'all see I got a bigger screen, huh? Because y'all weren't saying it loud enough before. Go big or go home. People perish. They give up. They quit. They let a season in their life to find their lifetime. What you waiting on? What you waiting on? Maybe your dream's too small. Maybe what you want, the reason God ain't giving it to you is because he sees better in you than you see in yourself. I love John 17 and 3. It says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you. The only true God. That I don't need all of this stuff I think is going to make me happy. At the end of the day, it's me and you, Jesus. I got this thing. Write this down. God wants a personal relationship with who? God wants a, per a, a personal relationship with you. That's a problem. Some of y'all lost granny during the COVID. She was your Jesus. Some of y'all lost a spouse during COVID. They were your identity. Some of y'all never had a daddy. God is saying, I need you to surrender everything over to me. Because whatever you lost needed to be lost. Because of what I'm about to bring. See, if we don't understand what, if you don't understand why you're here, then you will continue to drift through life. And eternal life is knowing God. It's having a passion and a purpose. 
The next one. I got to hurry. Let's go to Ephesians 5.15. Let's look at Ephesians. I'm trying to give y'all scripture so when y'all go home and y'all like, well, uh, she don't know my story. I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> so what really does matter in your life? Look at Ephesians 5.15, New Living's Translation. It says, so be careful how you what? This one's, this one's. This, Jesus said this. He's, he was thugging on this one. He says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like, but like those who are. Make the most of every in these evil days. Don't act. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. Well, I don't know. He ain't talking to me. Be still and know that I am God. Your homework this week is to get in a corner for five minutes and say, God, I need to know my next move. And that's it. He don't need to know your problems. He already knows. He needs you to listen. Say, listen. And here's one thing that you have to understand, that God matters. He can't be your last thought. Right? Sometimes the reason we ain't getting breakthroughs is because he knows once you get breakthrough, you go going to Disney every day. You ain't going to ever pray again because we truly don't really pray when everything's going great, right? I had this lady one time, she came in my church, and she came, and she, she's, she's like, Pastor Kill, always sick. Y'all know them hypochondriacs? She wanted to die so bad. I'm like, you want to die? No. No, I need the church to fast to pray for me. She came in, she goes, Pastor Kill, she said, I need you to pray for me. I'm dying of cancer. I said, who said? She goes, I just feel it. I said, huh? She goes, just pray for me. Pray for a miracle. I go tomorrow, and I know that they're going to tell me it's cancer because cancer is in my mama, my aunt, my uncle. Pray for me. I said, girl, you owning this stuff? She goes, well, I just, she goes to the doctor. She comes back next week. She ain't walking this time. Now she got a walker. She's walking with a walker. I said, man, girl, that's fast. You're like falling fast. Like, what did the doctor say? He can't spot cancer. I'm going to somebody else. I said, well, why are you on a walker? Because I just feel it all in my limbs. I think it's eating up everything. Can you pray for me? So I prayed again. This time I didn't pray for her body. I prayed for her mind. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every limb in her body that she is healed. I even got down on my knees and started rubbing her ankles. And I said, inflammation, whatever. I called every single possible infection that could be in her body. I said, it's dead. Because my Bible says, by his stripes, you were healed. Right? All of a sudden, that next week, she comes in. She's in a whole wheelchair. And I said, girl, Lord, that's fast. I can't believe this. You're dying. She goes, Pastor Gil, she goes, I can't walk. I can't sleep. I can't even lay in my bed. I am sick. I said, you got the doctor's report. How long you got? She said, they said, I still can't find no cancer. So I'm going to another one. I said, they still can't find no cancer, but it's in your body. Yes. It's the same thing that took my aunt out. She says, can you pray for me? I said, Lord, heal her or kill her. That neck, hey, she got up out of that wheelchair and started walking. What am I saying to you? A lot of times the reason we can't get out of where we are is because we're like this man. We got a broken finger. We've been hanging around with the wrong folk. Baby, your altitude is connected to your associations. I'm going to tell on my brother. My brother had gout. We go to Disney. I walked in there. I said, Bubba, I said, God wants me to lay hands on you right now. You're about to get healed. He said, can we wait till after Friday? I said, why? He said, because I get in the line first with this wheelchair. How many of us 
are using a system, are using a behavior to cause us to stay without faith because it's easier to stay broken than to trust God. You can't find your purpose because it's easier. God matters. Number two, people matter. People matter. People matter. Why? Because your, your, your purpose is connected to people. It's connected to people. Ain't nobody caring about me. Maybe nobody in your world. If I would have stopped when my family was like, girl, you doing what? You writing a book? You don't even know where commas go. If I would have listened to what they told me in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, sitting at the parapro, feeling my face, thinking maybe I am drooling, but I don't know because people are putting labels on me. Society's putting a label on me. If the church would have said I can't preach because I'm a girl, if I would allow things in my life to stop me by wrong choices, you know what I did? I decided every single thing that I'm walking through, I'm going to pull somebody else out. I got to get through it because if I don't get through it, they're going to stay in it. And you're too, uh-uh. You are too awesome to stay broke. I said yesterday, I put up a post. I said, they said, I said it, it, once you get to the top, Kim, what you going to do once you get to the top? I said, I'm going back and pulling everybody I can up with me. Why? Because we're limitless. Because you are blessed. You are too blessed to be stressed and too grateful to be hateful. You are anointed. So God matters. People matter. And eternity matters. If you get those things, three things important in your life. See, the vast majority of our life will be spent in eternity. Heaven is better than Atlanta, Georgia. Y'all ever seen those people? Oh, no, I want to go to that concert before Jesus comes back. Oh, no, I, I need to do this. Always life here is greater than over there. No, it ain't. Honey, in eternity, we're going to be having a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't. Ah. No, I'm getting up. And everywhere I go, I'm not even going to have to open my mouth. Why? Because I walked through some things that caught me on fire. You going to come out of you going to come out of hell on fire or you going to come out of hell burned. Bitter, angry. Not y'all, man. We got best sellers in this room. We've got popular top designers in this room. We've got preachers and prophets in this room. We've got business owners in this room. We got the first millionaires in your family in this room. We got buyers and sellers. We got Airbnb owners in this room. Y'all, it never shocks me when people are like, Kim, I can't believe this. Last week, I couldn't even pay my bills. This week, I paid eight months in advance. That never shocks me. Why? Because these people got their hearts right and they hanging around with me. You're so blessed that the people that are connected to you are going to be blessed. They're going to be a beneficiary. So here's it. You ready? Are you hot? You can play with me. Are you hot? Which means you're growing. Are you? You growing? Are you still where you were last year? Still waiting on God to bring something in your life before you find joy. Once I get a man, then I'm going to be happy. No, you ain't. You're going to get that man hell. Once I get my life together, my family celebrates me. No, you're not. This is an inward thing. It's a heart posture. Hot, you're growing. You're more to God than you've ever experienced so far. You get up the, in the morning, 
You make up in your mind. I'm about to give the devil hell. My husband and I and our marriage is about to be so he gonna be chasing me around the house. Why? Because I shifted who I am. Because I realized that there's more to my life than the finer things in life, the sea dues, the man, the woman, the big promotion. All that's a beneficiary of what I'm going to get when I get in the place where God says, yes, girl, you're ready. Because when God comes on the scene, he don't care who don't qualify you. He says, I'll give you a front row seat. Your job is to let it go. Let it go. You ain't got to take this anymore. Let it go. But I don't know how, Kim. You got to get up. You got to change your thinking. You can't watch Netflix and chill. Y'all are more excited about a new season of Virgin Diaries than listening to me preach on YouTube. When you want something bad enough. Elevation. Stephen Furtick. If you need a man, Stephen Furtick. But pour into yourself. Because here's the key. You gotta build the faith muscle. You don't need faith when everything's going right. You need faith when everything's going to hell in a handbasket. When you're sitting in your house and the walls are closing in. When you don't know where your kids are. When they're partying all night long and you've been driving around the Atlanta roads trying to find them. You discover their TikTok and they're on a pole. And you're like, ah! You better know how to say it's just a season. Devil, you may act like you got my kid right now while they swinging on that pole on TikTok. But God's got them. God's got them. God's got me. God's got my job. God's got this. See, we're so afraid of dying. We're so afraid of death. And eternity is like candytopia. The streets are Twizzlers. And Brewster ice cream. Ho-hos. In my mind. We're going to be able to eat whatever we want to eat. And not have to worry about pandemic 30. We're all living to get there. But I do believe that serving is the connector to the higher floors. I don't want to be on the floor. I want to be on floor 98,000. Where I have an elevator that gets me to my house in two seconds. With a worldwide view. How am I going to do that? By getting up out of my selfish place of brokenness. And choosing to use whatever I got right here. If it's CVS, I'm going to quit throwing the shampoo in the bag. Because I'm so mad at the couponers for coming in and buying 28,000 of them. And instead, I'm going to look at that person like that's my assignment today. What's your assignment? You don't got to have it all together to get it. Your assignment is just getting on social media, Facebook, and not telling us about little Jerry that potty trained. But instead, getting up and saying, I'll prophesy today that your ladder will be greater. I prophesy today that you're not going to cry in your bed all day long. And all of a sudden, people are going to be like, oh, my God, were you in my kitchen today? You're like, oh, my Jesus, maybe I'm prophetic. You are. Because what you're going through ain't even for you. It's for somebody else. Are you hot? Are you growing? Second Thessalonians said we ought always to thank God 
for you, brothers. And rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. And the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. How? Because Christianity is lived out. That's how come your preacher, your pastor, don't walk up in here and just give you a half sermon. I am sweating. I am, y'all, I am obnoxious every day, 24-7. Why? Because I got to live out what I want you to live out. What's important to you? Are you living hot or are you living lukewarm? You know what lukewarm is? Lukewarm is drifting. If I feel like coming to church, I'll come to church. If I don't feel like coming to church, I won't come to church. Just getting by. I'll tithe when I get my money under control. And you wonder how come everything in your house is broken. You've got to put the discipline in. You do your part and God will do his. Or are you cold? Are you cold? You don't know God yet. Y'all, when I moved back in with my mom and daddy at 36 years old, I was raised a preacher's kid. Raised on the church pew. My mother could not cut her hair. That's why her hair is as short as mine. Because we could not cut our hair till we were old. Religion shook us to our core we never learned about the grace of God and all of a sudden here we are been able to get out of religion and at 36 years old when I hit rock bottom had to move back in with my mom and daddy with my two sons I couldn't tell you if Noah took in five animals or two raised a preacher's kid I literally went and bought I went to Bible school I left, but I went. <laughs> what am I saying? You got to make up in your mind. And y'all, this is the best time ever to tell the devil. In Joel 2.25, y'all, it says that the enemy has got to give you back, uh, that God's going to give you back everything the devil, the enemy has stolen. That's even the bad choices you made. That's even the wrong. Y'all, when I was about to get married, I remember my daddy. Y'all know 285 is a straight. You, gotta, you just got to get off. You're going to keep going in circles. Y'all know what I'm talking about? My daddy took me around that interstate, 285, four times. Baby, please don't marry him. Please. Please. I'll buy you a BMW. I'll send you to law school. Anywhere you want to go. And I still did it. Why? Because if you understand that the enemy is not after your now, he's after your future. And I'm looking at some people in this place today that you've given up on yourself. I'm talking to some people online today that you've given up on yourself because people gave up on you. You think God did. And God is over saying, today's your divine appointment. I haven't given up on you. When I was coming back to Jesus... 2006, 7, 8. I lied to myself for a long time. And I told myself, I only was out of church for three years. I remember sitting around my table for Preachers of Atlanta and they were taping. Preachers of Atlanta. And they never gave me a script. They always just said, we're going to turn the, the TV on and you just talk. Just be y'all. We were good at that because there's nothing. What you see in me is what you get. There ain't nothing that I won't talk about. And all of a sudden I said, boys. This is before my bo both my boys work in ministry with me here. But both of these boys had seen so much brokenness for ministry. That they didn't want nothing to do with it. And I'm sitting there with the cameras going. And I said, guys, why won't you work in ministry with us? All the other preachers that I travel, all their families are in ministry with them. And Lincoln, standing right by there, said, because we can't stand your church. And I said, what? Now, I wasn't pastoring then. I 
hush. Mimi's trying to correct me. We ain't going there. And I remember I said, but guys, we raised you in church. And my son said, no, you didn't. We ain't been in church in 10 years. And I remember the Holy Spirit said, stop lying to yourself. Because what you won't reveal, I can't heal. How many times in our life do we stay broke? That's the scary thing about this pandemic. Is once you get out of the hang of it, y'all, you come to church. I know we we ain't we the church. That's why y'all flicking people off at the lights. And got to put a whole fish on your car. Oh, you don't want these hands. Well, you need to get your hips in church. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Well, this pandemic's done, and I'm not trying to. Y'all, every time I go out and I see people out, they're like, Pastor Kim, we coming back. I'm like, girl, just, just whenever you're ready. No, people just feeling guilty. This is not a guilt trip. Because I love you no matter what. I get, to, I get to love millions of people every day. But I want you to be the carriers of the glory in every area of your life. What am I saying? This pandemic's made us put God on the corner. Oh, we got, you know what I keep hearing everybody saying? All my pastor friends, church will never be the same again. No, it won't. It's going to be better. Why? Because people are hungry. Because people are making up in their minds. See, what the devil did was the devil put us in our houses in fear. But what God did was he got us in a place where we realized, I used to be an introvert, but I ain't no introvert no more. I used to not like hugs, but I want to hug everybody I can now. Why? Because we didn't have it. So what is it? You can stand up on your feet. What is it in this place that you've lost? What's your purpose? What is that thing that you used to fire, fire you up? Now it's gone. Because you think some mistakes in your life disqualified you. I don't care if you don't know the Bible. Go get your children's Bible. Make it picture. Get a picture Bible. It's so fun to learn out of. Go watch The Chosen. On YouTube, it's free. It'll teach you everything you need to know about it. Don't stay over here broke because you think you're disqualified. Because there's something going on in your life. Because here's what I'm going to tell you as I'm ending. If I wouldn't have walked through the things that kept people talking. I've been canceled this year on the cancel culture. I was served divorce papers this year. Last year been two years wasn't expecting none of it heartbroken my daddy dies two months later and God won't let me open my mouth he said you live so nobody believes it and I'm going to vindicate you yeah. what am I saying I could have laid in that bed and I could have said God why you give me this anointing I ain't never going to find no bow chicka wow wow. I'm too much. But instead I said, devil, I'm down right now. I'm down. I got to start all over again. 41 events canceled. Had a whole staff. We got the PPHZZ long, whatever that thing was. Where they were giving all these churches these loans. And God said, you can't have it. Because you don't need it. Your character has to keep up with where I'm taking you, Kim. What am I saying? I get the pain. I get it. I get holding receipts and wanting to say what you want to say, but you can't. Here's what I'm saying to you. God's taking you 
it don't make sense now. But when I tell you, it says in the back of the book that you're going to win. And God is saying to some people up in this room today, some people online today, you're back. You're back. You're back. You're back. You're back. You're back. There's somebody in this room and online today that you've allowed what happened to you get in you. It's in you. You've let it get in you. And now you're drinking poison hoping they die. God said today, let it go. I ain't letting it go, Kim, because if I let it go, then it means I'm pardoning the crime they did against me. Let it go. You know what I've discovered, y'all? Is people going to talk about you if you're doing good? They're going to talk about you if you're doing bad. Haters are just confused fans. Your mama, she was broken, so she's going to stay broken probably. Get up. Get up, pull your big old thick thigh. Get up. Every time you want to go and think of the negative and stalk them, don't. This is why you need to get on a connect group. Because the connect groups keep you centered. Because when you want to go stalk them or drive by their house and slash their tires, instead you call your sister, sis. Hold me back. Hold me back. She'll come over and be standing in front of you. You'll be like, no, your destiny's way bigger than this. This is a season, not a sentence. This is a moment, not a monument. Get up. 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 The more you move, the more you get moving. Y'all, when I wake up in the morning, I ain't joyful all the time. I get up and get up. You know what I've discovered? When you start moving, when you get out of your comfort zone, oh, when you act obnoxious, you're contagious. You get on some people's nerves, but before long, they still, they still, every day they watching you. Oh, they ain't liking your stuff, but every day they watching you. Why? Because they're like, man, whatever she got, I want it. Don't y'all want to be like that? Get up. Go home. Open your blinds. Get a part of this dream team. I give you a big banquet every year and spoil you. Make Jesus a priority. And you watch things change. I need everybody to lift your hand as high as you can. Come on. The reason I want you to do this is because, listen to me, all the negativity... That's been stuck like Chuck in you. Is leaving your palms. Why? Because we serve. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's saying it ain't over. It's just beginning. I've got a destiny. I've got a purpose. You're a game changer. You're the generational curse breaker for your family. That's why it was so hard to get in here today. Oh, it was so hard. Because God knew you were going to get an epiphany. You're going to realize it ain't over. It's just beginning. My ladder will be greater. I prophesy over everyone watching, everybody watching the replay, everybody in this building, that your ladder shall be greater, that this week you will walk into favor. Everywhere you go, you will walk into favor. So, Father, fill us. Fill us. Take away church hurt. Take away spousal hurt. There's somebody in here, man, you walking through rejection. Y'all fighting for your marriage. Keep fighting. Get out of your pride. Somebody else, you try to just quit. But you ain't going to be able to sleep till you move. So God, 
pour your spirit all across this room. Give us hope. Give us desire. Lord, let our hearts. I, there's somebody that I hear God say, and your heart's about to beat again. Your heart's about to beat again. Your heart's about to beat again. I heard the Lord say, they walked out, but I walked in. I'm walking in. I'm moving some furniture in your house right now. People keep bringing up your past. Honey, you don't even live there no more. You built, you, you sold the whole building and all the goods. It's a new season. It's a new season. Stir up our purpose, God, this week. Stir up our purpose like we ain't never experienced it. Come on, breathe. Breathe out. Blow out. Blow out. Like you just ran 10 miles. Blow out. Now breathe the fresh wind of God. Breathe it in your spirit. His Holy Spirit's moving all throughout you. All throughout your family. He's at your house right now. Dealing with that thing you've been praying about. This week, mountains are moving. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Y'all, on the count of three, I want you to give God a shout. Some of y'all are like, girl, I didn't feel none of that. Are you through? Well, if you didn't feel none of it, you're about to. On the count of three, it's about to stir up anything that's been stuck. It's about to get unstuck. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? On the count of three, what are you going to do? Go on and practice it. Some of y'all just going to go, woo Some of y'all going to go, yeah! Some of y'all going to say, I'm back! Y'all ready? One, two, three! All right. For all of y'all that just didn't know what we're about to do, we're about to give you a chance. Now y'all know. Tell them, give me some room. Give me some room. I even see the Lord just dropped in my spirit that there's somebody that's literally, you don't even remember how you got here. You've been living in such a fog from brokenness. You're about to see the grass is green. You're about to see glory follow you everywhere you go. You felt invisible. You're about to be very visible. I hope you got your rest. I see it. I see it. I see it. There's somebody in this place that you feel like you're too old to do what God's called you to do. You had some dreams that you literally thought God will never bring these things to fruition because of my choices. And I hear the Lord saying, you better buckle up. He's about to bring your dreams to pass. Y'all like, yeah, you ain't talking to me. Yes, I am. And you better claim it. You better claim it. Run, girl. Run! You better claim it. Are y'all ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, three. I love y'all. Go kill it this week.